Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. All right, so the next uh, card we're going to try is a Z80 um, MPU card. Uh, these are both uh, Ithaca Audio uh, cards. They're the same card, same rev, same everything. Uh, looks like this one was built by somebody else. Looks like this one was built by me. I don't know... I believe one of these ran at one point in time, I think. Um, and I'm not sure which. And I, uh, it looks as though this card is missing some, uh, uh, at least one component, which is the 8224 uh, clock control chip, um, which uh, I'm surprised the Z80 still needs that. Uh, but anyway, um, this card doesn't have it. So it makes me want to think maybe this card works and I was building up this card uh, as a second one. But <laughs> uh, this card is missing some parts also. Uh, there's uh, two load resistors um, for the plus and minus 16 lines. So there are some Zener diodes. Uh, so you need a resistor in, in series with a Zener diode um, in order to um, create some voltages. So it's plus or minus 16 on the bus. These are probably uh, plus or minus 12 or plus, plus 12 minus 5 or whatever. Um, whereas this card does have the resistors. Interesting. So, uh, but I figured since I've got two cards, I should at least be able to get one to work. Uh, so uh, let's, let's try. I think Pearl time. I'm looking to shine them up. I wish you have shiny gold, not dull gold. Okay, one more. Well, another problem with these two boards is um, this one has a bunch of bodge wires on it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bodge wires, and this card has none. So, and they are the same PC board rev. Uh, the one with the bodge wires is the one that I did not build. So, I'm assuming that one probably worked <laughs> or it probably would had a closer chance of working it has it has the full chips it's missing one u35 um and so is this missing on this one too it might be the vectored interrupt chip yeah, it's conceivable um or it might be an 80, it's either an 80, probably an 8212 or an 8214. The 8212 is a, uh, a latch, a D flip-flop latch, which is a, a parallel port. And, um, or it's the 8214, which was an option that you didn't need it. Um, and none of my uh, computer stuff needs a, a vector interrupt, so it could be that. Well, next step is to uh, find a schematic for these things and see if there's any recommended... Uh, Cuts and jumps. Okay, I had a uh, binder 
with lots of schematics in it. Can you, can you see that? I think you can. Oops. Drop my magnifier. All right. Uh, this is the byte board uh, CPU card that we were just looking at. Uh, here's the block diagram. Uh, let me make sure you're you are focused. There we go. That's better. All right. So 8080 processor, clock generator, the 8224, uh, some latches, uh, the high byte latch, uh, data in, data out is, is a, usually a latch, line drivers, uh, 74367s, there's an optional 8212, uh, which is an interrupt. I think they have that wrong. It should be an 8214. Oh, here's the 8214. Ah, uh, I see. The 8214 here, um, my pencil. Uh, the 8214 here handles the vectored interrupt lines. There's eight vectored interrupt lines. And it uh, generates a code. And then that goes into this uh, latch uh, that that's able to be read. So that's what that is. Uh, schematic for that card. This is a byte card that I have that's a um, eight prom cards. Uh, allows you to use eight probably 2716s or maybe 2708s. Uh, I'm not sure what, what this was designed for. Anyway, we're not looking at that card. Um, uh, let's see, next card is the uh, byte front panel. I showed you that card, which is the one with a little bunch of little switches on the on the left hand side. Uh, so I have quite a few byte cards. Uh, schematics for that. Uh, this is that GPIO uh, breadboard uh, card that I showed. Uh, 16K static RAM, so we have two of these cards in the system. So the upper 32K is a static RAM card. The lower 32K, I believe, is the dynamic memory card. Um, static RAM. Ah, here we go. Z80 Ithaca Audio 1977. Um, it has an onboard 2708. Ah, maybe that's it. Okay, so this is for a PROM, an EEPROM. Uh, it's a 4K, 4K EEPROM. Allows you to do uh, power on uh, software. Um, selectable I.O. dressing mode, 8080 mode, or Z80 mode. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, 8224 clock generator provides an 8080 look-alike uh, phase one and phase two for the S100 bus. Ah, so that's why it's there. The Z80 doesn't need it, but the S100 bus might. <laughs> uh, so that's why that's on it. And a bunch of the um, status I.O. byte, uh, S input, output, memory read, memory write, stuff like that, are latched. So there's a latch on that board. Um, let's see, it talks about the 80, 2708 PROM. Uh, regulator. I'm a little curious about the uh, plus or minus 16. Uh, that's used anywhere. Well, it has a it has a good uh, checkout procedure and everything. We probably can probably can follow this to uh, see what's uh, going on if it doesn't work. Uh, talks about the S100 bus. Gives all 100 pins. That's nice. Uh, oh, and revisions. Okay. Uh, clock change data pins. Revision board numbers. Board modifications. Okay, so there's some cut and jumps. Um, yeah, there are some cut and jumps. So I can look at that to see if the cut and jumps were done correctly on that one card. Uh, here's the card layout. 
parts list. Um, again, cut and jumps. More cut and jumps. And some schematics that are pretty small. Um, is the same? Yeah, looks like these are the same. I have three copies of it. Probably trying to get the exposure correct. Xerox machines weren't always that great back then. Okay, well, they are readable. They're kind of tiny, um, but I have a, a big magnifier, so we can look at that. Um, we don't need the EEPROM. Um, there are some jumper, or not jumpers, but there are some configuration uh, switches. So we'll need to learn uh, what those switches do. And uh, give it a try. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> this, this IC here has a pin uh, that's been lifted out. Uh, looks like maybe somebody was troubleshooting it. And looks like something I would have done. Well, anyway, we got everything we need. Okay, after doing some reading, uh, uh, the board that has the bodge wires does have this um, uh, revision done to it. And this uh, revision, it says... Um, revision 1.3 must be completed before making this revision. So this is one point. This is the 1.4 revision. Um, but it basically says all boards between uh, uh, before Rev 1.4 needs to be. Let's see here. This revision is incorporated into the PC artwork on all boards revisioned 1.4 or higher. And my boards. Or 1.3. So anyway, it's got those cuts and jumps. So I'm thinking that's the card that actually worked. And I thought, uh, what the hey, maybe we can just plug it in. Um, I, there was some question about what do these uh, jumpers do, I mean, uh, switches do. Turns out that this bank of switches sets the uh, address for the ROM. Since we're not using the ROM, we don't care. And five of these switches are used um, only, um, and they are to insert weight states. Because this is a 4 megahertz uh, board, it may not work correctly with everything. So you can go in and you can put weight states. If your memory is too slow, you can slow it down. You can uh, put in a weight state to the microprocessor, which basically says, let the microprocessor use two cycles to do what used to take one cycle. So you can slow it down by half or... or um, and uh, I/O cycles or uh, memory cycles or something like that. So anyway, there's weight weights on here. So we could we could do that if we're having problems. It also discusses um, a revision to the MSI front panel. Um, this card was designed specifically for the Altair and the MSI, and it says specifically that the MSI front panel uh, doesn't like to operate at four megahertz. And uh, there's some bouncing on some line, and it wants you to do a cut and uh, a cut to one trace and add a hundred ohm resistor to dampen out a ringing that happens on one of the lines. Um, so um, I don't feel like cutting and jumping my uh, my inside. So um, let's try it out and uh, see if it works. Maybe we can add some weight states. Um, but let's just see if uh, if it does anything at all. Okay. Um, so uh, I pulled out the disk controller card and I pulled out the uh, serial card just in case this thing decides to fry boards um, I don't want them in the system um, so uh, I also didn't feel lucky so I put it on a uh, uh, extender card um, I do have a the front panel though so let's see if we can talk to it with the front panel um, all right So, let's see if we can deposit a program. Oh. Uh,
That works. Wow. Okay, we have a Z80 card. And it's working. I don't know if it's working at the full 4 megahertz. It might. Uh, we can hook up an oscilloscope and uh, check that out. But uh, yeah, this card does seem to work. I don't know if you noticed my program, it was just a uh, read FF, write FF loop, the uh, program I always use. Um, and it uh, seems to be working. So our Z80 card is in good shape. Now it's interesting that we don't have those resistors on the board. So they do generate some voltages, but obviously they're not used. Um, so it begs the question, why did they have them there in the first place? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have to dig into that. That's a bit uh, curious. Uh, I don't think the PROM needs it. I think it's a 5 volt only. Huh. That is odd. Nothing else on the board. Hmm. I don't know. It's a mystery. We'll have to look at the schematic. Okay, I put the uh, cards back in, the uh, disc controller card and the uh, serial card. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can boot. Yep. You know, it's really funny, the um, bump, 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 bump that I mentioned uh, that the, the drive always made and I could tell that it was working. This does not have the exact same t tune. Um, and I believe it's because of that a re re relocatable BIOS file. I believe that if we had put that first on the disk, then it would have been faster for CPM to go access that file. But because it has to reach out in tracks to go get that file, the tune is delayed a little bit when it when it does that. Uh, bump, bump. That, a prrr, that prrr, is it going out and trying to find that R locatable BIOS. So, yep. I think the thing to do then is to, uh, whenever you create a system disk, the very, very first file to transfer over is that R lock BIOS. Um, so. Then it'll boot faster. Uh, well, um, I think I want to uh, get this up and running. Uh, if I decide to sell it, then I can uh, say that it works. And uh, I do need an 8224. Um, so I went on to eBay, and um, they're hard to find. Luckily, Russia <laughs> uh, cloned them back uh, in the day, and a bunch of people have the cloned Russian version. So uh, I ordered uh, some from Bulgaria. I'm not sure how long they'll take to get here, but... Um, I shouldn't say that I ordered them. I made an offer. <laughs> uh, there was a guy in Russia who would sell you 20 of them, and another guy in Bulgaria who would sell you 10 of them, so I tried to uh, tried to get a deal on 10 of them. I don't need 20. Um, I did figure out what the plus... Uh, uh, this is a plus 12 and minus 5, and that's uh, used only on the old uh, 2708 PROMs. Um, the instruction manual does tell you how to cut and jump this to get to use a 2716, um, if that's of any interest. <laughs> um, but in general, I'm not going to use this prom on this card, so I really don't care about the uh, uh, plus 12 minus 5. So, um, I seem to have chips everywhere, everywhere else, um, and all I need is that uh, 8224. And then uh, I need to do all of the cut and jumps that uh, that other card had. Uh, then we should be able to try this one out.